Hello, everybody. It is Demetra K and Donovan throwing rocks and high in his hands to Deke on to the hard way. Thank you for being here. As always, it is our goal to uplift, uh, to educate, and just spread love and knowledge on Black people so that we can do and be better. Now, I'm going to get right into it. A lot of you guys have probably seen that Tay Diggs is trending again. Well, it's not for a good reason, I guess. Well, like, depending on how you look at it. He's having some black girl problems again. And more specifically, he has basically said that it's because of the harassment <laughs> and the dragging that black women have done to him over the years. It has made him question whether he could date white women again. They've just traumatized a brother to death to where he just <laughs> he's just going to throw in the towel and, you know, maybe he's thinking about coming back home. I don't know. Um as a lot of you guys probably knew or knew, he used to be married to a white woman. Oh gosh, some actress that they he met her on Broadway. Um, they had a child, and then mm -hmm. when the child came into the picture, he decided to write a book called Mixed Me, where he was saying that he didn't just want his son to embrace being black, he wanted the son to embrace being white as well. So now this is that's where all of this started from. And that happened with like 2013 or 11 mm -hmm. or something. And from that point. He has just been making like different comments in regards to black women, and some people would say uplifting white women. And so I went on the internet this morning just to find some stuff. It was a bunch of stuff, and so I picked out some things. Uh oh, Donald's about to kill us kill all. Myself. Um, and so lately, the quote that he's um, he's in trouble for. He was on a podcast called The Red Pill, and he says, "I don't know if I can ever mess with a white girl now." I don't like that. That goes against who I am as a person. I feel like I've had to deal with this so long. It has changed what I think like, what I'm attracted to. He also says, and because of the criticism he's received over the years, they said he's now in a place where he doesn't care what people think about his dating choices. He admitted still, he still harbors some resentment about how he was treated. Mm -hmm. Now, he also says, deep down inside, there's resentment. I don't want to say it's um, I suppress it, but I just watch it. When it happens to you personally, even though you understand the logic, there's trauma there, he said. So, again, he said, I've been you black winches have traumatized me to where <laughs> I, I'm scared to even look at a white woman now because you guys have dragged me so much. Now... As I said, he came out with a book some years ago in homage to his mixed son. Now, not only do he just blame black women for his, um, well, he blames black women for him not wanting to date white women anymore, but he also gives credit to his black mama mm -hmm. for his preference in white women or for white women. He says, when I was 13, I was reading a magazine and there was a picture of a black woman and I said, Oh, she's pretty. I don't know if he said it like that, but he said, I want to marry her. And my mom said, oh, honey, you're going to marry a white woman. It hurt my feelings, but she was right, Dig said. She also told him that she was always knew um, he was going to marry a white woman. So he's basically saying th that she embedded in his psyche or love chamber or whatever it was, his ability to be attracted to women, she she embedded in him that he was going to go be with white women. She like predestined it, you know? <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, that, that, it just, I, I don't know. So, has black women been unfair to Tay? And when I say unfair, has it, have they dragged him unnecessarily? Because there's a lot of, to, just to finish, there's a lot of black men who date white women and who <laughs> and they don't get the dragging that he does. Now, let me finish this and then we can go mm -hmm. on. Now, so with, throughout these years of him being in the spotlight, now mind you, Tate Diggs has been in a lot of black movies. Mm -hmm. uh, How Stella Got a Groove Back, The Best Man. Oxymoron, ain't it? Right. The, black, uh, the Best Man Holiday, mm -hmm. Brown, Sh Brown Sugar. Brown Sugar. Mm -hmm. Not white pure cane sugar, but brown sugar. You know, so he's been in all these movies with all these black women. But, you know, that's a whole other story. And so, um, so what did he say here? I'm looking for the quote. And now, he says, I won't pretend race 
wasn't an issue. He first got married to his white wife. He says, I won't pretend race wasn't an issue because it was. We've had to deal with situations in the past where black women would give her an attitude and not acknowledge her. And you've got to uh, nip that shit in the bud. So he's basically saying that black women have been rude and you know unkind to his wife and he ain't putting up with it. Well, uh, can I uh, say this? Do you remember that scene in Jungle Fever when Queen Latifah was the waitress? Yes. And Wesley Snipes came in there and she's like, well, you know, he's like, hey, is there a problem? And she's right. like, you know, to tell you the truth, oh, there yeah. really is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, ladies, so we have one chicken livers and onions with candy yams and collard greens. And one Sylvia's world famous talked about barbecue rib special. Potato salad and black eyed peas. Right. Two iced teas. Thank can you. I get you anything else? No, I think that's fine. You know, um, I really should have done this a long time ago. Break away and start my own business. You still gonna work at Masson and Covington? I'm the temp secretary, remember? <laughs> Damn it. Excuse me, miss. Miss. May we order, please? Yes, may I take your order? Is this your station? Yes, this is my station. Unfortunately. Look, you can take my order. Matter of fact, you could have taken my order 30 minutes ago when I sat my black ass in can this I chair. Take your order. Excuse me. Uh, do you have a problem? Yes, I do have a problem, to be honest with you. Fake, tired brothers like you coming in here. That's so typical. I can't even believe you brought her stringy hair ass up here to eat. Oh, let me tell you something. First of all, Miss Al Sharpton, you, you don't have... It's your, not your business you who your I bring in here. Else, okay? It's not your business. You are a waitress. Your job is to wait. Today's specials are the Maryland crab cakes, Creole shrimp gumbo, and blackened catfish. I suggest you have the blackened catfish. Well, I suggest you find the manager. Oh, you want my manager? I want your manager. Well, it's like that, right? That's the other right, money. Fine, I want fine, the manager. Fine, fine, you get my, I'll get my manager for you. You're fired! You're tired. She's white. Mm-hmm. I love her. Yeah. And she told what's on mine. Right. Now, um, you know, being you know, raised black and stuff like that. I mean, him running around acting stupid and ignorant, you know that you're going to get a stigma in this society if you date outside of your race, much less right. a blonde queen or whatever well, you Well, his wife is dark. They're not together anymore. Right, he's now with some mixed woman, so I guess right. he's saying... He's trying to go in, in the middle and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, this is saying I, that's why I'm back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, so, I, I mean, when I hear brothers and or um, even... Black women that complain once they go outside their race, like, oh, oh my God, you're, you're not a victim because you're you, choosing to Right. You know that stigma growing right. up because right. you're a black person, so you know what's going to come at you right. when you go outside of your race. So yeah. That's, that's my opinion. And so, and he says, uh, let's not, let's just say it's not a stereotype that black women are less submissive and hard to deal with. That's Being true. around all them black women made me really miss my wife. Now, this is when he was shooting the best man holiday. Yeah. I guess he was like, y'all black wanches are driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. I long for my snow queen. Well, you know, and, and it's sad. You know, you know, I know black women, that, again, we're not saying all are black women. You can't say that. We're not so, saying all. But we're talking a majority of, of black women. Right. This is a, it's, not a false stereotype. It has to be some truth to the stereotype. If everybody that's tired, if you hear a little noise, that's my cat. Act it up. Um, and he only does that when she's here. So, you know, he's a good cat until he gets here. But uh, that stereotype or that narrative, there's a little truth to that narrative because it's being said, it's being shown on TV, all kinds of stuff. Right. So, I mean, it's in Tyler Perry movies. You know, why do they have an attitude? What did I tell you? Watch a black woman early in the morning and her fist is balling. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I mean, I, don't, I guess. I, I guess it's true. I, I, ah. Okay, well, I, I, I want to tell you this. <laughs> I, I've been staying up doing my research. Which, which, which hood rat show was you watching? I, watching you just... I was watching TV One and I was watching For My Man and For My Woman. What the hell is that? Do you mention that show? Never even heard of it. Oh my gosh! It's a it's a, a show that talks about like what a person would do for their man. Mm -hmm. How that now every and almost every episode that I've seen so far, it's in its sixth or seventh season. So you probably watch every episode. No, no, no. I, I, I'm <laughs> only binge watching. Yeah, no, no. I, I'm only in uh, series two because I'm watching it off YouTube, mm -hmm. so I'm not watching the series itself, which I could, but mm -hmm. I just don't. Uh, but in every series, the woman is introduced to a man. 
right? Mm -hmm. And either he's a drug dealer or he's an ex-con, but he always plays his ex-con thing down. And she's like, oh, I'll give him a chance, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And because she's dealing with this guy or whatever the deal is, it leads her into jail. Be a, a murder, be a oh, bank so robbery. Oh, like a ride or die chick type Yeah, of and vice versa. There's another series called For My Woman where the oh, guy does oh, stuff like that. <laughs> but in almost every scenario, the... Uh, you know, the, the woman is dating this guy that's a con. And what I've been telling you about for years, I've known you for over 30 years. Why is it that these women think that if I came and I met you and I said, hey, well, I just came out of prison. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even, even though I was convicted of uh, rape and stuff. No, it wasn't rape. She accused me of rape, but I didn't do nothing to her. Okay, I'll give them a chance. You should be fleeing. There was one episode where the guy is in church. He has an ankle bracelet on in the church. She still gave him a chance. And then... In the relationship, he wanted a threesome. She was a church girl. So she started doing stuff that she had never done before. So he wanted a threesome. She gave him a threesome. Then he wanted her best friend. So they ended up kidnapping her best friend that she know all her life. And they ended up going to jail. She's in jail right now for life. For kidnapping her kidnapping best friend. And yeah. So to just do so, what? So that her man could have her. Because she wasn't thinking the ramifications of what she was doing. Now, this is a single mother of... I mean, I don't know what drives people to do that kind of stuff. It's not Watch something I would do, but it Watch sounds interesting. Show. I, I wouldn't have had television, but yeah. I don't have it's television. It's a very so. you could look it up on YouTube. Okay, I'll look it, it up on YouTube. For, it's called for my man or for my woman. Okay, but you know, specifically for Tay's um, woman dating mm -hmm. choices or women dating choices, I should say, um, he's he's probably through with black, I mean, white women because black women have made it very difficult for the brother. Nah, I don't think he's through with white now, women. Okay, let me ask I think you he'll probably give him a mixed girl or something. Okay, well, he is with a mixed yeah, girl now. Probably give him a mixed girl. Let me ask you, do you think that he has any validity to what he's saying as far as black women have just been the most to him in regards to his dating preferences? No. None, none whatsoever. I don't believe he has any validity. Um... I just kind of feel like this. I feel like people to shift ultimately mind their business. That's, that's how I see it. I think people should mind their business and not worry about what other people are doing. Right. And now, the other part of that is Tay keeps putting his foot in it. Okay. He in the shit in his mouth. Well, he keeps stepping in it. It's like, dude. Well, he keeps stepping in it too because he's believing his own hype. Right. Like, leave it alone. Because he even made the statement and he says, "Here, where to go?" Uh, well, basically, he's saying, you know, if people would just worry about themselves and then their life could be better. Blah blah blah. Which I do agree with that. But it's like you keep on coming out with this. What's it, to me is like bait. Mm -hmm. I almost have to wonder, is he saying these things? Because me and you talked about it a minute ago. Mm -hmm. Is he saying it just to be relevant again? Because he knows all Negroes on planet Earth that he cannot say anything about white women or black women without black women coming, coming and jump on his head. Uh -huh. You know? Mm -hmm. or, uh, I don't want to say it's on the other page. Uh, but So uh -huh. I looked on Twitter. I was like, look, I got another page. And Twitter, um, black Twitter, now you know black Twitter ain't no joke. And so somebody asked, why do you and men like you always need to justify where you are in life by black blaming black women? Mm -hmm. I think that's a very valid question. Okay. Why is that? Why does, not you, but why do men, some men, black men, mm -hmm. need to blame black women? You know, he blamed his mama, saying that she yeah. instilled in him to be with white women. And now he's blaming black women again. And listen, I'm not saying black women are not at fault to some degree, but he's blaming black women again for him not wanting. Basically, he's saying, y'all y'all scared me. No, no, no. I'm see, traumatized. See, see, and to me, that's a cop out. He's trying to be relevant. Personal responsibility. At the end of the day, you are picking who you want to be with and you are picking who's going to make you happy. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can blame everybody. That, that's like me and you blaming the white man because... Uh, I live in the ghetto. No, I live in the ghetto because I choose to live in the ghetto. Right. Uh, I choose to get food stamps because I choose to limit myself to get food stamps. Right. So on, so on, so forth. So I, I just think he's using that as an excuse to not do the work. Yeah, I mean, I, I was like, this dude here. You know, it's like you keep on saying that black women are messing with you, 
But then you keep on, your animals are going <laughs> yes, off up in here. Yes, the cat's about to knock the light over. Thailand is intent on breaking this production down. Yes, he's, so, a, he's an agent. Yeah, he's Thailand an agent. Is an agent. <laughs> he does um, have blue eyes. Yeah, yeah. He, he, I almost said something. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, he does I almost called him a blue eyed devil. Yes. But anyway. He does have blue eyes. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I just think Tay. I think some of it is calculated on mm-hmm. his behalf. Mm-hmm. He wants to come off as this victim, this, you know, tragic uh, character. How, you know, I'm just really trying to live my life with my white women, but y'all yeah. Yeah. won't you, allow me to do yeah. that. How do, you sit, how do you sit there and call yourself a man and, and you're worried about what women are saying? Well, you come on now. Let's be. Let's let's play both sides of the fence. You know, black women, mm-hmm. when they want you to have it, they will give it to you. And do I not get it from black women? Oh, yes. Right. And 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 I and I, I I give as good as I get, don't I? Yes. The book of Ike is on Amazon. <laughs> I suggest people read it. And if you don't like that book, Shirazad Ali is another one. And that and that will take care of the situation. Yeah, he. Uh, All right. I, I don't know. It's just I, I hear what he's saying that you know because I I listen. I know I, I'm black woman as y'all can see. We can be pretty treacherous sometimes. That's true. That's very. True. We can be a lot, especially if you do something to us that we don't like. We are gonna make sure you know we don't like it, and then two years later we are gonna remind your ass yes. every now and again to let you know we didn't like it. Watch for uh, for my man. You got some treacherous women in there. I, I mean, all, all over, you know, for the dick, for the love. Uh, you know, they want to. It, it, it's an amazing uh, series, and some of it is based on uh, true events. Mm-hmm. Remember that uh, that lady that shot that uh, restaurant in Louisiana, mm-hmm. and she was on security detail, and she's on death row right now still. Oh wow! And she was a police officer, and she shot that thing up, and it was. It, 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 it's an incredible. So, what advice would you have for Mister Diggs? Amen. And to to, uh, to untraumatize himself. Uh, amen. Uh, number one, you, you're trying to be relevant. That's not going to work. Number two, you're in a lot of black movies that, um, you know, obviously you're not that traumatized if you're going to be taking a check in a black right. movie, dealing with, you know, black women. Right. Deal with them. Knowing how a lot of black women are, not all of them, you know you're going to deal with attitude. So don't act like, like you're new to this. You know? Yeah, and, and I think you made a great point. On one hand, you're taking black checks from black movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, all these, let's be honest, those black movies that he starred in with black women put him on. Oh, mm-hmm. You know, um, up until he came up with all this nonsense about white women and all this other stuff, I know a lot of black women. I, I work mm-hmm. with a girl over her in her cubicle. She had this big old picture of Kay Diggs and said, that's my man. One mm-hmm. day I'm going to be with him. And also... Black women really loved Tay Diggs mm-hmm. until he started to open his mouth and say, well, I don't really love y'all ignorant, that yeah, much. Ignorant. And then uh, they tried so hard to get him uh, to keep his momentum as a star going. Mm-hmm. Because you see, I remember all those little TV series he was in. Yeah. And it, like, it would last a couple series and then they would just drop. Well, him. you got to also remember, not you, but just, mm-hmm. you know, in general, you who, who put you there? Was it white women or was it black right. women? So it's like you want to use black women mm-hmm. To get you those checks and to put you on, but then you want to and listen. It's your personal choice you want to be with, but you want to not only gallivant around with white women, but you want to sing the praises to everybody else. Why you prefer white women, and then how negative and bad attitudes black women have. But it's like, wait a second, mother sucker. That's Michael Blackson's word. Yeah, mm-hmm. These these white women ain't flocking to your movies. Right, like flocking exactly. To it's How many bad. white women can recite every line from how Stella got a groove back, back mm-hmm. even knew you was wasting in the movie? And mm-hmm. they, like, the white women ain't putting you on as black women. Right. And, and so how do you expect to go forward now that you keep on saying these little, you know, things about, but now you're going to blame black women for your dating. Come on. Yeah. It's, it, like I said, you know, controversy sells. It keeps them in, in the spotlight, be it uh, good or negative. Like I said, look at the Kardashians. Mm-hmm. They're famous because of what? They can suck a good... Well, they can suck it. I don't know how good it yeah, is, you know, but, you know. But, you know it, Black China. I mean, you know, that's what you got to do relevant. And like I said, it ain't like he's been working steady lately, so. Well, he's not going to work in, in, anymore, mm-hmm. you know, if he keeps this up. Because it is right. black women and black people who go see those black movies that he's on. Right. And, you know, it's just, come on. Don't, don't, don't like the hand that feeds you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And, you know, what, what's really funny is, you know, okay, let's say he decides to date a, a white woman. I don't see her connections putting him in blockbuster white movies. Exactly. 
But yeah, you want to dog out the people who are doing that. Like I said, there's a time before he came out with all these shenanigans that black women loved. Like he, you no, know, was the, he was the, the young Denzel, you mm -hmm. know. No, he, I don't think that was a big old <laughs> hammerhead that he has, a big old hammerhead. Yeah, but. you hate, stop hating. I'm not hating. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, if you look at some of the black movies he's he starred in, he plays the same character. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. So, so Samal Lathan, same thing, same character. She plays the same Kinda, character. Sorta. So, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not saying he's a bad guy or whatever, but he needs to stop complaining about the choices that he makes. Yeah, I agree. I mean, him not being able to physically or mentally date white women ain't got nothing to do with black women. Because, he, I mean, if he was really bad, he'd be like, I don't care what you think. I'm I'm stepping out with the Lilia Snow Queen on the planet. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and maybe even uh, keep your personal life personal. That, but the, the other part of that... that I see takes place as far as people's dating preferences. If they'll say, like you hear a man say, well, I only date white women because, you know, black women, they got attitudes, they, they talk too much. Black this, women won't do other. this, they won't do that. That's not, not true. <laughs> well, well, whether it's true so, or not, it's right. like, is that your only reason for dating outside of your race is because what the black women won't do? Mm -hmm. Why not say I'm dating, you know, Susie or Becky right. because she's nice to me, she's sweet, she's, right. she speaks very, you know, right. um, you know, just... All the, all the positive things is what this specific person not, has to offer. Not what a white woman, mm -hmm. but what this white woman, whose name is Becky, mm -hmm. has to offer. And well, so that's kind of what Tay sure, has done. Sure, sure. Well, D, uh, we, me and you talk a lot, and you are a starch and arch defender of black women and black womanness. And I applaud you for that, which you should be. Now, but uh, what do I say, though? I will ride for black women, mm -hmm. but I ain't going to lie for black okay, women. So I just want true. to put that out there before true. you go on. True. Now, recently, uh, you have been interacting with black women at a, uh, <laughs> a symposium or something like yes. that. Yes. And uh, I don't know, maybe before you didn't really notice this until you mean, and I started pointing this stuff out. But now you seem to be noticing a lot of things that I've been talking about. Well, I mean, I noticed, I noticed it before, but it's just like, see, because me personally, just me personally, I don't hang around a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I don't hang out. Right. I hang out with you, mm -hmm. you know, my man, my daughter, mm -hmm. and they out of town. Right, dad. Um, mm -hmm. And my dad. Mm -hmm. And I see my brothers. That's that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my, my media family, that, I don't, right. that's it. So it's not that these things are unheard of. It's just when you hear it. Like with your own ears, it's like okay. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you observed in your? Well, while I was away, uh -huh. uh, I met a few people, and very nice young ladies. Very, uh, very nice young ladies. I will say that right off the bat. I um, had a, an awesome time spending uh -huh. time with these women, and in all fairness, um, a lot of them were young, uh -huh. and so we were just having a conversation about certain things, and money came up. And some of them said that they just don't mm -hmm. like saving money. They don't know how to save money. And, you know, and I thought that was brutally honest. That was their truth. There's nothing wrong with them speaking that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, especially in regards to, like, getting income taxes and stuff, a lot of it, you know, people get them and it, it's just gone. It's just gone. Paying for Christmas. Yeah, and so then you have, well, not even paying for Christmas, just buying stuff. And so then you're back to where you were, like, oh, shit. Well, I'm going to get this money to pay the rent. Now, is that learned behavior? Is that just something that's impulsive? I will say this. If it's not learned behavior, it's behavior that... Okay, maybe it's not learned behavior, but maybe it was something that wasn't taught. You see, we, As parents, what we need to realize, we got to teach our kids something because not teaching them mm -hmm. is just as bad as just them going out into the world and... You know what I'm saying? I got to tell you how to save money. I gotta show you how to well, save. Well, money. basically, you're saying teaching them finances is just as important as teaching them how to wipe their ass. Absolutely. I mean, otherwise they'll get out there and not know how to function. And so, you know, speaking with these young ladies, I don't think that it was to me. I don't. I don't think that what they were they were bad. Mm -hmm. I just think that's all they knew. You know what I mean? Just buy, 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 shop, shop, shop. Now, I was saying, just in my defense, or I'm an anomaly. Yeah. I don't shop. Mm -hmm. I don't spend money that I don't need to spend. Like, I've been on this show a couple times. You guys have probably seen me say, wear the same black jacket. I have mm -hmm. a different shirt on, by the way. This one says, Dear Racism, um, I'm not my grandparents. Sincerely, these hands. <laughs> um, right. 
Got a, my daughter ordered it for me off the internet mm-hmm. for a couple bucks, so whatever. Bucks, right, right. And, um, you, and, and you find little gems here and yeah, there. Yeah, so maybe I'm a lot different than the rest of people because, like I said, shopping is not my thing. I don't hate it, but I don't love mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I don't like shopping. Either. So, um, but you know just, me, I'm always on the internet. Oh, yeah. But just to sit and actually talk to people. But what it gave me an insight is to, it's not that they're just out there spending this money like, oh, here, yeah, I don't have this burning hole in my pocket. It was just that that's all they knew how to do. Okay, what were they spending the money on? Can I give a... Um, just, you know, like um, purses and just the regular stuff. Purses, phones, just the stuff. Their kids, $300 shoes. Yeah, that kind of stuff. But you know, year old with a cell phone. But again, you know, I'm not saying it to, you know, make these women look bad because I know that one will actually be watching. Um, I just think that a lot of people just don't know any different. And hey, you know... If that's what you want to do for your kids and you're no, not depending on anybody else to make your life happen, then by all means, sure, you should sure do money. that. You do what you got to do. There is no law saying that you have to save money. Right. However, if you're in a situation where you want to better yourself mm-hmm. and get out of your environment, how do you do that if you don't say it? And, you know, and my daughter was like that to some degree, but it just took some work even up until recently. Mm-hmm. You know, she's one of those people who like to go on the internet and stuff is always coming to the house. I'm like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Well, what are you doing? Oh, I saw it. I need to have it. And so she said the other day she walked into Forever 21 and she had a, a dress and some a shirt in her hand. And so she said she said to herself, self, do you really need these items? The and she said she put it back. between a need and a want. Right. So she put it back because she says, you always talk to me about saving money. About not, because I can't take a dress to the light company. Listen, light company, mm-hmm. y'all, I'm here because today is the day. Y'all finna shut it down. Um, Can you take this dress? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I, I want everybody to understand this, too. Uh, the old way you think and the way I was taught was, of course, there's no point in working your ass off and you don't reward yourself at the end of the day because you got to do something to you motivate do. yourself. I agree. So take about 20% of your paycheck. And, you know, not even 20, I'm sorry, that's too much. I'm about to say, because yeah. I took uh, myself to Chipotle last yeah, night for a yeah. while. I mean, but, 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 but you're going to take about 5% of your paycheck, 5%, 5% and yeah. get yourself something, $25. Mm-hmm. That's what I kind of say, something like $25. And, you know, reward yourself and do something with that. But the rest, um, in America, we don't save. But what I was told was you should be at least saving 25% of that check. Yeah, Net. you should. Like my daughter said, when she gets $100, she saves 30 Good. And I said, well, whatever works for you. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I like to save all of it outside of paying my bills because mm-hmm. I'm just not one of those people who are out and about all the time and buying different clothes. I have two pair of jeans, these ones and another yeah. pair that I wear. Those are my, the other pair of my fancy jeans. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I just, but as I said to you guys before, you know, I was in a house fire um, in 2012. Lost it all. Lost it all with the exception of my purse. Mm-hmm. The sh- literal shirt on my back and draws on my ass. Okay. Mm-hmm. Al, you hear that, Al? <laughs> Lost it all. Mm-hmm. And so I was. I back was, then, that was some big ass draws. <laughs> <laughs> it still is, yeah. baby. Um, no, uh, because at the time I was starting a fashion blog, yeah. and I thought, damn, if I would stay on, I'd be huge. Mm-hmm. You know, I had all these clothes and stuff, but I would. My thing mm-hmm. was. Being frugal, so I would go to the thrift store and just get all these things for a steal. Mm-hmm. Lost every stitch of clothing I had, and so it made me realize things like, "Wow, first of all, you're lucky to be alive because you could have been like Fire uh, Marshal Bill up yeah, in there. Everything else could be replaced." Er- and then that's what I said. And from mm-hmm. that point, I restructured my life. I'm going to have what I need mm-hmm. and be able to take care of some of the things that I want. I never wanted to be. My ideology is this: I'm a minimalist. Yeah, I want to be able to put everything that I own into your in my car and say deuces. deuces. I'm out if I need to. And so, like I said, I'm weird. I'm probably not like a lot of women Mm -hmm. um, to where I can do that. But I I, I never wanted to spend my life buying material things. I wanted to spend the rest of my life buying experiences and being able to do things and being out, not being tied to a clock. Having to go to work every day, Mm -hmm. nine to five, miserable. You want to own yourself. Myself and my time. Mm -hmm. And that's what saving money will allow you to do. Yeah, you can go buy a dress every week if you want Mm -hmm. and two pair of shoes. But at the end of the day, you're probably just wearing those to the office. Right. Because you have to. Well, I remember uh, growing up, you see these guys, they would get like the, you know, the... uh, High pan, you know, the, the you know, cross colors, and they get all this other stuff, right? 
and you would see them every day at school. They'd be dressed up, and you know. And when I was went to school, we went to school uh, in Japan, so we would go to Osan and get yeah. our thing name brand. It was no big deal, you know. Six bucks for Air Jordans, wow. six dollars. Was, was it real? Yeah, they made in Korea. They were made in Korea, so the only thing wrong with them was they were like the stitch was out or something, so right. they were rejected. The glue was coming. Right. The, <laughs> the little, little, little jump man was. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. There was the real stuff, but you know, there was a little, a, yeah. little, little defects on. So uh, we would get our stuff over there, but. Um, I remember I would see these guys all the time, and they'd be always dressed to the nines. Mm. Always dressed, always dressed, always dressed. So now we get invited to a wedding. Now, I didn't always dress like that. I was like, you know, you, you see me, I wear little yeah. shoes and jeans, and I'm just whatever. You dress like me, just put it on yeah. and just yeah. go. But when it's time to get clean, you can get clean. I get cleaned up. People clean people, it in the board of health. And people are like, holy crap. Right. But then you see the same guy wearing the same clothes he wears Monday through Friday. Yeah, that stuff is expensive. Yeah. You know, so... Right. Um, you know, that's a good, um, it reminds me of an interview I read of Anita Baker for you youngsters. Anita B- Baker is the songstress. She yes. said, sweet love. Yes. Not yes. like I did. Yeah. I butchered it, but you know. <laughs> She's about to retire. She's on a retirement trip. I'm going to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, she in the interview, she was saying she regrets coming out the way she did as far as with the dresses and all of that. Which we love. It was classy. Yeah. When she was smaller, she was cute. Well, no, but cut. even then, she, she was smaller then. Mm-hmm. But she said because when she goes to the mall, people are like, that ain't Anita Baker. Ain't no way. Because right. she just wears like sweat. And right. she, she says, no, that's what you see on the album cover. Right. In and the videos. I, of course, I'm going to come for it like I got some sense. But yeah, I'm going to the mall. I got all these flats and these jeans. and mm-hmm. But she said people were like, you ain't Anita Baker. Yeah, you know, I... I, I, I <laughs> I saw a video of her in concert on mm-hmm. YouTube, and uh, she's real tiny, petite, you know, yeah. and she looked like, you know, had a little short hairstyle, mm-hmm. and she looked like uh, a young Tony Braxton, mm-hmm. you know, back in the day. I mean, just fine little thing. But then, you know, like I said, so Tony Braxton looked like her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like her. But um, but now you see Anita, you know, she's older and stuff like that now with that, that middle part right there. Oh, she's in her city. Yeah, yeah. You know, and don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, you know, you she's can only hold it in for yeah. so long. You she know? has that husky voice and... Um, she had those two. She had two boys. Right? Two boys. She had two boys. Uh-huh. And wow, Walter. Yeah, and then her boy, her, her man left her and stuff like that. And she went crazy. Oh, wow. Well, I'm just saying she had gone. You know, she had got a little upset about that. And whatever. And she had a warrant out for. I mean, Anita no, went she hood. She had a warrant out for her. Yeah. yeah. Anita went hood for a while. So, but it was for contracting services. It was nothing bad. At right. Show. But uh, a phenomenal singer. Nothing against you. I love you. I got all your albums. Um, phenomenal singer. See, for those of you guys that don't know. Anita Baker was the lead singer of a group called Chapter 8. So if you remember that song I called Just Wanna, wanna Be Your Mama. Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys get a chance to see her on, on her uh, farewell tour, please go see that because that's going to be a once in a lifetime mm-hmm. uh, thing. So uh, back to what we were saying. So with these economics, and it's kind of good that we're talking about economics because in the next segment, we're going to really talk about uh, financial economics. And we went to an NAACP. Mm-hmm. Uh, event, yep. which once again, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that in the second second thing. Once again, I was about to go off, and you almost made me speak. Right, right. Don't do it. And wait, wait. And don't who was dragging it. me out there? Don't do it, Diamond. Yeah, it, it was so funny. <laughs> She's coming in late, or you weren't late, but you know she's trying to find the place because it's in a, a in, obscure in, location in the boondocks. Yeah, it's in the boondocks and in the industrial area. And um, we get there, and the vice the vice president of the event. Which another reason why, like I said, the NAACP it's a dated organization. Um, I thought I, I was gonna have to stab you for yeah, a couple I, times. I was getting pr- pretty mad. The same old lady is still controlling it uh, in the Riverside chapter here. I, I want to give her name out, but um, you know, these trying to you know she's coming to the event, and I said, yeah, they want you to work the table. And as soon as she gets there, what did they say? Oh, D. Everyone, like, oh, D. Oh, D. They're like, get to the table, girl. No, she <laughs> yeah. didn't want that. Said, That's my scene. Yeah, she likes to do that. I mm-hmm. love her for it. You know, yeah. um, pointing me out mm-hmm. and you know the things that I do, and, mm-hmm. you know the community and the things that I say. And yeah, I mean you were all of that. Yeah, you started the AS, AS, the, the BSU, the BSU. That's an Asian studio. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'll, yeah, I started the, <laughs> the BSU. We started the BSU at our, at our mm-hmm. local school. Hey, Ty, hey, Ty, badass. And um, so you know you have a, a thing, that, but you're very integral because she was saying in the thing because Dee's just sitting there and she's like. Oh, D, did you get that? Are you taking notes for that? Because they want you to do that. He was just like, and then no. she's ready to go. So we're in the front row, and she wants us to dip out in the front. 
I was tired, okay? Yeah. I, I was tired. The second speaker, yeah. he, he was an engineer and stuff like that. And he was giving us a lot of data yeah. that none of us could process. Right. Um, if you're ever, if you're ever going to be a speaking person, I have a degree in aeronautics, so I'm very technical. I know how to technical write and all that other stuff. But one thing they always teach you in speech and, and uh, different classes is when you're dealing with everyday people, you don't want to be too technical. So you always dumb it down to like a fifth grade yeah, I was, level. I was thinking about all kind of stuff. <laughs> right. What's the meaning of life? No, you, you were thinking about when I get home, getting that hot shower. What am I going to make eat? for dinner right. tomorrow, not today? Right. I mean, it was right. like, really, dude? Right. I mean, it was very insightful, but mm-hmm. this, this information was just... Right. And then, you know, uh, what I was saying with him as a speaker, the crowd that he's trying to inflect was not there. Because that's something young people, you want to desire a young yeah, person. Yeah, there was a lot of older people. Yeah, we were older. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah they're or your age, rather. Like, yeah, my age. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and I was a kid compared to some of the people that were there. <laughs> I was a baby. <laughs> so. Uh, Donovan was on his worst behavior. I was on, I mean, I was, I mean, because every time we go to these events, it's, it's the same. <sighs> the NWCD youth organization. Where are the young men? Wait, I, you know what? I don't want to spoil it. Wait till our next minute because I'm, I've got a lot to say about that. But the highlight of that was a financial thing. Um, your brother does finances. And this mm-hmm. is what we talk about. Just like you just said in this one. The girl is taught to, I'm just going to spend my money. Right. But a- after the tax refund is spent, what do you got left? You're still back in the same exact situation. Yeah, and I, I just think it's um, once you know better, you do better type of situation. Because, you know... I think we've all been at a point in our life when we were younger, in all fairness, these girls are a lot younger mm-hmm. than me, where we just check money off. Once or twice in the life, you know, you went out and bought all the stuff you thought you needed, but you mm-hmm. didn't need. You got boots and the same pair of boots in different colors. And, you know, I mean, I've done that once or twice, although I've always just been a frugal. Mm-hmm. Never really been the type yeah. that just yeah. I mean, burn up the I'm, money. I'm a firm believer in it's the man that makes the clothes, not the clothes that make the man. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my gift to Gab was good no matter what I'm in. So it didn't right. matter. Um, but watch that show for my man because a lot of the scenarios that these women put themselves in is based off, oh, we're running out of money. Like we, when they meet the dude, he's all flossing and he right. loses his job. And then he goes, hey, I got an idea. Let's rob a bank. Oh, you want to hear a funny story? Tell me a funny story. Okay, y'all, this is a funny story. I promise you it's funny. Last Sat Friday, right? You robbed a bank. No, no, not quite. <laughs> no, I didn't. My sister, uh, she likes to go to the game rooms, to say the least. Yes, casino queen. Casino Slot queen. Jockey. But she's not one of those type of people who trick it off the rent. Right, she's right. Like, she, she only spends what she She's a has. responsible gambler. Is right. that a such thing? Yeah. A responsible gambler? She only tricks off the So she was there at a time that she really wasn't supposed to be there. Let's okay. just say that. So she says she's sitting there at the game room with the other people that she knows. They're sitting mm-hmm. there, you know, doing their thing. So she says she hears a lady in the back. Uh, of the room, the room is probably no bigger than this here. Okay. Um, so she says she hears a lady on her speakerphone, the earphones, saying, "Yeah, there's one in the back." And so my sister, <laughs> oh, she, no. my sister, oh, she's picking up a frequency. No, no, no. Okay. My sister, you know, she yeah. got these antenna ears where she yeah. hear all kind of conversations. Mm-hmm. Again, there's one in the back. No, just one. He said behind the pool table. Mm-hmm. So my sister says she looks Looking. like who the hell? It's a security guard. Right. So she said as she hears the lady talking. The lady is casing a joint, like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, Jay's about to set him up to be robbed. Mm-hmm. So she said, shit, I ain't supposed to be here right now. So right, I don't be no witness. You no, know, <laughs> she said, she, um, this lady was sitting across from her. She said, Mama, come on, Mama, get your stuff. And shit, the lady was looking like, what, Mama? Mm-hmm. This is the older lady. So she said, lady got her stuff. And so she said, <laughs> all the other people around her, because you know, my sister got big eyes. Yeah. She said, she gave him the eyes, like, <laughs> y'all, come on, lady, you know, come on. So she they all followed her outside and she told them mm-hmm. that lady back there is about to get to stick the place up. Mm-hmm. And they goes, Oh yeah, we heard it too, but we didn't know she was talking. <laughs> Holy crap. So I don't know if the place ended up getting robbed, but she pulled like she said five people out of there with her. She said, I couldn't save everybody. <laughs> oh, but she said no. the lady was older, I had to get her oh, out of there. And she no. said, the lady was like, I was wondering why he was calling me mama. Yeah. But she said they was like, Thank you. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> So needless to say, she going I said wow. the Lord was trying to tell you something. Your ass yeah. wasn't supposed to be there. Right, exactly. She, she that <laughs> but that goes to tell you where people are putting themselves in these situations. Right. To where, you know, you're with your man, whatever, he lost his job, or maybe he was a, a felon to begin with. Right. 
So all he knows is criminology. But maybe that girl was on the phone with her dude. You know, who else would she be on the phone yeah, with? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, what are you doing with the guy that would say, the answer to our problems is go to jail and you're going to ride with them? Um, because propensity of the law is, well, yeah, the I mean, principle of the law is, if, if you're going along with it, you're, just, you're, yeah. you're just as guilty as the person that actually did I, I, I mean, we talk about self-esteem a lot on this show. Mm -hmm. I listen. I'm not saying that you know Demetra K has always been this way, and I did try to rhyme that, y'all. I've mean, I mean, <laughs> right. had some issues, but not quite like that. Mm -hmm. I'll tell y'all, story. I'm gonna be very sure. transparent with y'all. Sure. I don't even know if my man has heard this story. How many minutes? You got okay, the okay. time. This is a quick story. La la. la. <clears throat> so back in the day when D was uh, Demetra K was a young Demetra K, mm -hmm. I had you know. I uh, started talking to this guy. Demetri X. You're Demetri X. I started talking to this guy, whatever. You know, he was cool and stuff at first, but mm -hmm. then, you know, he had lost his job and then he tried to get into doing some things he wasn't supposed to be doing. And so one day, he was in my truck and we picked up his homies. He's in your truck. Where's yeah. his truck? Um, he had lost his job. You know, all that stupid shit. You know, these are stupid shit they did tell you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So, him and his, hom his homies get in the car. We pick up his homies, they get in the car. So, and they had this bag with him. And I'm like, what's, what, what's in the back of the car? Mm -hmm. It's a bag a weed. of weed. And I'm freaking Stanking out. Weed. out. Mm -hmm. I'm freaking out. Mm -hmm. And I was running You're out like, of I, I honey, didn't go to the mm -hmm. gas station, but I needed to go pick them. I mean, it was just a right. mess. So I'm sitting at the light and I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to run out of gas. I'm trying mm -hmm. to go to the gas station. I run the light. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm the night. I got this weed in my car. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to get it pulled over. I didn't. I took Drive those knee rolls home, mm -hmm. and I never saw him again. Thank you. I was like, Thank are you. you serious? I got a child right. raising my nieces and nephews, mm -hmm. and you going to get in my car with it? <laughs> well, let me ask you this. What made you, when a guy told me a lot, and everybody loses their job legitimately and stuff like that. But what made you continue to deal with this guy if you don't see him? Well, we didn't see each other that long in the first place, so it wasn't like that. Um, it was just, it seemed like it was in a close proximity, all this stuff started to unfold. So I don't even know if, if he really lost the job or was it just this big time or trying to be this big time, don't mm -hmm. deal with what the situation was. But I couldn't hang out with him because not only, you get in my car with that kind of um marijuana, mm -hmm. says, I don't give a fuck about you, right. bitch. I mm -hmm. mean, excuse yeah. my language, mm -hmm. I'm just being as raw as I can. That's what he was saying. I'm, you're just a catalyst for me and mm -hmm. my boys to get to do what we need to do. Right, you know, and the funny thing is you say that in the show for my man, when once they get mm -hmm. caught, they immediately turn on each other. Right. Uh, it was her. Even though she had nothing, you know, she right. was just riding with him. He's like throwing and her he under the bus. he called me and called me and called me. I was like, listen, we can't hang out. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Stop calling me. Because I don't appreciate what you did. Now, you know, maybe you need to get one of them other girls or women who, you know, love. Because he was tall mm -hmm. and good looking. That don't mean shit to me and my freedom. Right. I Listen, you being tall and handsome ain't got nothing to do with me. You ain't going to be putting no money on my books. Mm -hmm. Right. If I go down. I mean, we could have went down for the count. Mm -hmm. It was so much. in It was ridiculous. I said, you know what? I didn't and what ask. What is he going to do with this? I, I didn't even ask. I just needed to get them motherfuckers out of my car. Mm -hmm. And I and I took off. Well, why didn't you tell them get out of my car right now? Um, you know, because I don't know who these, they really are. I'm not trying to get stupid with them and then we mm -hmm. cause them. But, you know, you got to be quick on your feet. Right. I'm going right. to take y'all home. You know, I didn't make a big deal about it at the time, but took them home. But, and, but what if on the way taking them home you got pulled over? Which is what I thought was going to happen. Because, like I said, I ran the light trying to get some gas, but I'm panicking. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is the listen, my mama ain't going to understand this shit. Right. She, I, you know, my child ain't gonna understand. Like I said, I'm raising my niece and that they not gonna understand this. But again, I don't. As silly as I've been in my life when it comes to relationships, I ain't never loved no man enough to jeopardize my freedom and the livelihood of my daughter mm -hmm. or my nieces and nephews. Well, that's obvious. You left her. You you left Deanna's dad. I mean, well, <laughs> I was supposed to do. Right, right. You know, <laughs> but no, nah, I mean, so I. I I, I don't want to say I get it because I don't get it. Mm -hmm. I don't get a woman who would, you know, do silly stuff in the name of love. You know, like my um, best friend, uh, Michi, her mom always says, a friend will never lead you to danger. danger. Mm -hmm. And so if you were a man that's going to say, hey, listen, baby, listen, I need you to go stick up, you know, case the casino mm -hmm. for me. And see, 
if a man really loves you, he want to go do your dirt all by your right. lonely. Right. Go do your dirt by yourself. Don't include your woman. Mm -hmm. You're just somebody he's using to get to the next level. Like you said, he gonna leave you holding the bag. Mm -hmm. I don't I know if you guys have ever watched the movie Coldest Winter ever, or not watched the movie, rather read the book. It mm -hmm. talks about that. Mm -hmm. But you know, it, my sister soldier. Right, but but in this show, this is what happens in all this way. I mean, these women, there's nothing. You know, they got they're trying to get themselves together, or they're they're together. Right, and they love these thugs. See, I didn't love no thugs, you know, because he wasn't a thug per se, but his behavior was thuggish. Right, but you know, in, in one episode, there's one girl, she was working and she's at work and she had met this guy mm -hmm. and, you know, they're living in the suburbs and she wanted a little adventure in her life and she meets this rough edged guy and then it just goes. Go parasailing. Right. You know, you want an adventure? Right. Go right. to the Yosemite, you know, National Park if you want an adventure, but you don't need to go do no chicanery or murder but, or kidnapping. Uh, but watch this show. It's very... I'll check it out. I'll have some and, Valentine's and, 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 the, and the thing is, I can see why this show is because you see these girls making... And right now, what is the biggest group of people being incarcerated right now? Black women. Black women. Like women, we're starting to catch up to mm -hmm. y'all black asses. Right. I guess they're going to have us together one. Well, we ain't going to be together because you right. can't be in together presently. Exactly. So, yeah. so it, it's very prevalent. But uh, stay with us for the second hour. We're going to talk about um, financial economics. And if you're watching the uh, podcast, we have a, uh, we're trying out this blue screen here and to see how this thing works. Uh, usually when we do our show, we use the green screens. And right. we have the green screen right in front of us, right on top. So we're going to, you know, we're kind of just putting this test bed out and see how the blue screen works. And check out the colors and all that good stuff like that. So, but check with us in the second hour. We'll be right back in less than five. We're going to be talking about financial economics. And the guy that was talking financial okay. economics was what was his name? Lynn Cooper. Lynn Cooper. Doctor Lynn. Doctor Lynn Cooper. Cooper. The guy was talking the real. I mean, but is he was talking what we talk about all the time? Mm -hmm. So you guys just stay tuned as we uh, do that. So just we'll be back in five. Get ready. <laughs> 